High performance radials. Hey, you sold out of Gillette Track 2. <laughs> Delivery's coming any second. But why should a busy man like you have to wait when this razor will do? Gillette Track 2 shaves me closer and smoother than that. I'll wait. These will fit your Track 2 handle. I know what I'm getting with Track 2 twin blades, but those, I'll wait. But, but to guys who use Gillette Track 2, no other blade will do. Ah. Track, Track 2? two? Ah. We'll, we'll wait. wait. Gillette, when it comes to shaving, we give you the edge. On NBC's Sports World, see exciting same-day coverage of the Parker vs. Love middleweight bout, plus the high-flying thrills and spills of World Cup aerial skiing later today. Okay, let us update you on just what is going on around the country. In Providence, Syracuse at the half out in front of Villanova. That one standing at 40 to 28. Roosevelt Bowie has some foul trouble. He did not score in the first half. In the Midwest region, Denton, Texas. North Carolina out in front of Texas A&M. That one standing 36-35 in that ball game as they're in a timeout. And in Bowling Green in the Mideast region, Kentucky out in front of Florida State. They were coasting at the half. They're out in front 49-27. Kyle Macy has 14. Sam Bowie has 9. Points. Let's go back to Tempe, Arizona, rejoin UCLA and DePaul. Thank you, Brian. Great job of following all the other action around the country. We're tied at 57, DePaul and UCLA. The Bruins have the ball just six and a half minutes left in this game. Oh, this is just a copy of what we saw yesterday. Two overtime games, and thus far, neither team able to pull away. DePaul's biggest lead has been four. UCLA's largest lead, six. DePaul sitting in the 2-3 zone. Now you get into a chess game. There's six minutes left in the game, 6-10. How about Syracuse without Roosevelt? Bowie didn't score the first half and still leading Villanova by 12 at the intermission. Big orange and tough up in that snow country. Or an outstanding ball play. Force the ball to play man to man. That's right, play. Otherwise, why the people are booing. Tie game. It's the pressure on the defense to come out. That's right. Well, they go to the man to man. Bradshaw and Foster. Wilkes gets grubs. Oh, good work by DePaul. Wilkes goes to the hoop and scores, and he is followed by Grubbs. Oh, that was a nice move by the senior Wilkes. Big, big basket that time of the game. Is it my imagination, or does it seem to you that uh, Wilkes has made the big basket for you? Every time, every time. Here comes the fake. He goes around the man. He goes up. He's caught from behind by Grubbs. Plays it off the glass, so it can't be rejected. Foul on Grubbs is third. No one with more than three in the game, and Wilkes shooting for the three-point play. UCLA back in front by three on the effort from James Wilkes. Five minutes, 30 seconds left. UCLA is in man to man. Inside, coming steps up Grubbs. No, he keeps it himself. Rebound, Sanders. UCLA with the ball. Got to get the ball in tight, and they got to go to their star. I don't like the matchup here. They got Mark McGuire and Kiki Vandeweghe. Mark might pick up his fourth foul. Sanders helping out. Good pressure by DePaul. Kiki has taken the school here to open up. Foster indicates play two. Foster in the corner. Oh, nice move as he reversed and scored. Lightning quick move, and UCLA leads by five. 62-57, Coach, I think we can finally say it. Now there is pressure. DePaul, number one in the country, trails by five with 4.38 left. Who's got a great play by Bradshaw? Oh, holy mackerel. What a terrible shot Grubbs took. Bradshaw did a 360, a 720, a half gainer, and put the ball in. Yeah, but did you like it? <laughs> holy mackerel. UCLA's lead to three on a sensational play by Bradshaw. Cummings caught reaching in. Let's see Bradshaw get He gets up in the air. He has to tuck his legs in so he doesn't get down in touch without putting it up. Then he hooks it out with his left arm off the back of the rim and in it goes. Oh, let's see. Kenneth Edmondson say that again. There were all five UCLA players were within reach to actually touch him. He had five men within three feet of him. What a shot. One little guard in a sea of blue gets two. And now let's go to New York and Brian Gumbel. 
Adelaide DePaul involved in a great ball game, but there's another great ball game going on in the Midwest Regional in Denton, Texas. There at Texas A&M, North Carolina, going at it. It's close. Let's check in live. Jay Randolph with Gary Thompson, 12.45 to play in the game here at North Texas State University, 39-36, Texas A&M leading North Carolina. Carolina down by one at halftime, 30-29. to 29. Carolina with the ball right now, Cole Scott. Out it comes. Carolina, Gary, having trouble with the A&M zone. Well, that's right. They had the one-point lead and went four corners. They're able, not able to convert off of it. A&M's got a three-point lead. A&M coming back, leading at 39-36. Well, it's been that kind of day in Denton, Texas. North Carolina having more trouble than expected with Texas A&M. Certainly, DePaul's Blue Demon having more trouble with UCLA than they Virgil. thought they would. Let's go back it is to his second. Report from Jay Randolph. Carolina and AM in a struggle. Here it's UCLA 62, DePaul 59. Four minutes, 16 seconds left in the game. The Amateur Basketball Association of the United States of America administers the international amateur basketball program of this country under the guidelines set by FIBA, the international governing body of basketball. For free information on U.S. amateur basketball, contact ABA USA, 1750 East Boulder, Colorado Springs, Colorado. Preceding announcement furnished by the NCAA. Sanders hits the free throw, and UCLA's lead is four. UCLA is in the one and one, and they only have committed three fouls, so they're in great position. Sanders matching the number on his back. He still is there. It remains a four-point lead. It's coming. Shot the rebound. Here comes Bradshaw. The ball lost only one game all year. That was at Notre Dame in double overtime. Cummings hanging. He can't score. And was he fouled? Yes. Sanders of UCLA. I don't think there's any way he could have made that shot, Dick. He got the ball caught behind his head, and he had to reach way back even to get the ball up on the rim. Third foul on Sanders. Cummings toes the strike. Averaging 14 points a game this year, and he's an 82% free throw shooter. 20 points for Cummings, the leading scorer in this game. Four minutes, five seconds left. Sixty-three, sixty-one. UCLA's lead is two, and pressure in the backcourt. Oh, Bradshaw almost picked it away. He is so quick defensively. Oh, boy, he's right there. Holton to Wilkes. Long pass to Holton. He takes it in. Nice. Blocked by Cummings and stolen by Bradshaw. DePaul with a chance to tie. It's Cummings. Oh, Cummings. 63. Oh, shot. Terry Cummings with 23, and the game is tied with 340 left. I can't take another overtime, Dick. We've had our last three games have been overtimes that we've done together. That's right. Last week it was Indiana over Ohio State, and yesterday in the Midwest, Louisville survived, and Missouri upset Notre Dame. Tie game. Sanders against Cummings. He scores. He took it over a man three inches taller, 13 for Sanders. Boy, Sanders matured late in the season. He was the Louisiana Player of the Year two straight years before going west. Foul. And I believe this one on Wilkes for holding McGuire. That'll be his fourth. I'll go back and see Sanders in action. Let's see. by Cummings, and Sanders got it. Oh, no, and Bradshaw coming back up court, kicks the ball over to Cummings, Cummings drops it in two. Oh, that was two plays. All right, down 65-63, UCLA in front. Less than three minutes remaining as Dillard ties it up. Skip Dillard makes it 65 aside, 251 left. Dillard has 12. Six months of hard work comes down to two minutes and 44 seconds. Ooh, a good save by Vandewey. You have to be able to catch the ball, too, in this game. And he just made a tough catch. Well, he has all the tools. A great action. Sanders working on Cummings. Trying to get inside. Sanders again. 
to get the ball to either man inside. They're both seniors. They've been in tournaments before. Whoop. Holton, a good fake. And Holton's first points of the game give UCLA the lead. He'll make that six point. I'm sorry. I hadn't remembered him scoring, but he did have some in the first half. He made that super dunk in the first half. That's right. Of course he did. 67-65, UCLA, as we wind it down to two minutes remaining. Playing man-to-man, -man, UCLA, to get the ball into Mark McGuire. Move up the defensive man, Jim Mitchell, and then he can pass the ball in. Mitchell. There it is. There's Aguirre over Wilkes. He fouls, and Wilkes will be out of the game as Aguirre turned his ankle in the process. There wasn't that much contact. The foul, a good call, and Aguirre apparently relaxing a little bit, turned his ankle as he this spun been... out of bounds. Mark, say it isn't so. Wow, that's like, a, like a, an elephant getting up. <laughs> they come up in sections. <laughs> Boy, that's, he must feel like... Oh. One to the man who has to try to stop him, and James Wilkes apparently has fouled out. He's not left the court as yet, but according to our books, that's his fifth. And a tough assignment, Cliff Pruitt, the freshman, will come in. Wilkes leaves the game. He made some key baskets, not only defensively doing a good job on Aguirre, but made 10 points himself. Gee, I, it looks to me that the move should be to Allums, but he's going to Pruitt. Well, let's talk about Wilkes defensively. He held Aguirre to 16 points, and that's good work. Yeah, but he also had zoned some of the time out there. But Wilkes played an excellent game offensively and defensively. What uh, Larry Brown was doing at that particular time, you got a minute to make a substitution for a guy fouled out. So he took advantage of it, and meanwhile, he was icing Mark Aguirre. Making Mark Aguirre think of the shots. It's a one of Two shots. It's a two-shot foul. It's not one-to-one. -one. Matter of fact, from now on, after this shot, both teams are in the one-to-one. -one. It was Aguirre who shot two technicals, two attempts after the technical against Brown, and missed them both. Very big misses, but he's an excellent shooter. I, I doubt if you'll miss now, Dick, because he, he'll be concentrating. I thought earlier in the game his head was someplace else. This one to Todd. We're even at 67. Oh, no doubt about those two. No. Vandaway helping out in backcourt. Release the pressure, give the ball to Vandaway. One minute, 40 seconds left. Sanders, oh, barely weaving his ball. Oh, Aguirre is down, and he's holding his ankle again. Oh, let's hope not. No, I hope he's not hurt. Aguirre colliding right in front of us as he tried to reach in for the steal. Is that the same ankle he was holding earlier? I, I don't know, Dick. I, um, but he, he's hurt this time. I hope it's not serious. Foul. Went against Dillard, his fourth. And Aguirre limping to the sidelines. Ray Meyer has had incredibly bad luck. Remember a few years ago, Dave Corzine going into the tournament was injured. Here Last it is. year it was Watkins that was hurt. See if his foot lands. Up. There it is. Yep. There it is. He's, that, that's a problem. Once a ball player's foot lands and another ball player's foot, you have a problem. It normally uh, creates a severe sprain. Now, I don't know how bad uh, Mark's sprain will be, but later on after this game, that thing will swell up. A ball player can play while his body's hot. He can, he can, he can stay in there. But I, if, now this timeout will hurt him. I, I doubt it. That's, it's going to be a problem. Ray and Meyer has let, call let, time. Let's see that again, Dick. Ray Meyer has five timeouts left. Now he has four left after this call. If we can see that play again, it's, it's great camera work by Harry Curl and his crew. Congratulations. There you are. Bang. Right there. That's and then he turns. We've all yeah. done that, even yeah. maybe on a on a place, yeah. a crack on a sidewalk or something, and you don't expect it. Yeah. And yeah, Aguirre, he, he wants to walk it off. He has to keep moving. If he if he stops moving, that thing will just swell up. Let's take a timeout. 138 remaining. Each team fighting to stay alive. They're tied at 67. Join me for a special occasion: the introduction of the ultimate LTD, the elegant new LTD Crown Victoria. The elegance surrounds you. And so does the quiet. You ride as quietly as in a Rolls Royce. Mileage? With automatic overdrive option, no competitor's full-size V8 surpasses LTD Crown Victoria's gas mileage ratings. The ultimate LTD, for the elegance, quiet, and mileage that'll make you proud to say, mine's the LTD Crown Victoria. This is the remote control for RCA's incredible new special effects VCR. Select Division 625 with slow motion, fast forward, stop action, and the maximum record time available. Six hours. Only RCA has Select Division 625. Special effects now in a six-hour VCR.
Let RCA turn your television into select division. Dick Anberg with Al McGuire. Tempe, Arizona, the scene. The game is tied at 67. And they are perhaps the college basketball player of the year. Mark McGuire, DePaul star, has turned an ankle. He stays in the game. Mike Sanders moves to the line for UCLA, trying to break a 67 tie. Even though Aguirre's in there, you can't uh, see how he can possibly be anywhere near 100%. He can barely stand on that foot. Yeah, but just to have him in there gives confidence to the rest of the kids. Sanders hits the front end of the one and one, and UCLA has a one point lead, 68 67. I think I like to set something up. Both teams have three timeouts left, both teams are in the one and one. Sanders missed one of two of the last chance. Hits them both this time, 69-67. The pressure continues on top-rated DePaul. Now, everyone, come along and coach with me. UCLA is playing man-to-man. -man. They're going to try to get the ball into the man. Vandaway is guarding Aguirre now. Cummings, he's been the hot hand. Plenty of time left. There's two. Aguirre. Oh, tough luck with it. Saved by Cummings. He batted it back out. Good play by Cummings. Aguirre still wants the ball, loses it, and it's saved by Sanders. One minute left. UCLA leads by two. Now the key is they can go four corners. They can't call a timeout. They take the take advantage of Aguirre. Aguirre's ankle. Mitchum fouls court. Good foul. Very important foul at this time in the game because Aguirre could not cover defensively. That'll send the freshman through it, and he just took a big, deep swallow. He's not an outstanding free throw shooter. He's their worst 65%. He's their worst free throw shooter, Dick. And he goes to the line. Quickly, other scores. Texas A&M 41, North Carolina 36. Syracuse leads Villanova 50-37. Kentucky breezing against Florida State 53-33. And here, UCLA leads DePaul by two. The pro moved in a timeout at the right time. Coach Meyer. Well, I hope he didn't steal Brian Gumbel's thunder. I'm sure he has more updates. Let's go back to New York. Dick Enberg, thank you very much. There's enough thunder to go around the country on this Sunday. Indeed, a great ball game. UCLA DePaul will be getting back to it in a moment. But right now, let's go to Denton, Texas. Check in on a game there live. Jay Randolph and Gary Thompson, Texas A&M, leading 50 to 38 over North Carolina. 7:35 to go in the game. A&M with the basketball. Britain, who has been brilliant in the second half. Britain backing in against Black, puts it up. Won't go. There's a foul called underneath on Vernon Smith, number 31 of A&M. Gary, quite a ball game, and A&M getting a big break as Carolina had trouble scoring over a seven-minute span. Well, they certainly did. Four outside shooting by North Carolina, but Britain has come back not only shooting, but making good assists. Okay, Jay Randolph, thank you. A&M up by 12. That's a big surprise going on in Denton right now. Cliff Pruitt at the line trying to complete a surprise in Tempe. Let's go back to Dick Enberg. All right, Brian. Thank you. UCLA 69 to ball 67 with 51 seconds remaining in the game. Cliff Pruitt, the freshman for UCLA at the line. He's two for two today. UCLA in the one and one has made three out of four opportunities. Just one time on the back end they missed. And here's Pruitt. <laughs> Oh, you there, know, here's the biggest moment in his young life. Very difficult for him to make this foul shot. He has four points today. Well, a lot of pressure on a young guy from Bourbon Day High School. Oh, oh, oh he's got it crying. 70 to 67, and the vice tightens on top-rated DePaul. Well, Pruitt gives himself a nice little smile, then. That one's easy. That one's no problem. The ball trails by four. 51 seconds left. They have the ball in the hands of Bradshaw. Aguirre playing with a sprained ankle. It's Grubbs who will shoot it. Rebound. Holton of UCLA. We may be seeing the biggest upset of the tournament as a foul on Cummings of the ball. Cummings reached in. Foul Holton. And the fact he reached over the top and he fouled him. Yesterday, when Lamar, unranked, not 
walked off fifth rated Oregon State, but many said UCLA should not have been in the 48 team field. There were cries from all over the country the Bruins didn't deserve to be in this tournament. And now Ray Meyer must be wishing deep down inside they had not made it. He trails by four, and UCLA with a one and one holds him at the line. Now the pro move to the timeout, let him think. Not as difficult as the, the fouls were made before by Pruitt. There were big fouls that he made, especially the first one. He didn't put enough trajectory on it. He pulled his arm back, but I guess the, the sun's shining on him today. It went in. This game is not over we yet. There's it. 37 seconds left. All right, and Larry Brown is instructing his Bruins and trying to find some magic at the other end as the veteran Ray Meyer will be back. UCLA at the line. <laughs> It's the Waco Kid. Them Monroe Radiomatic. Right, good, good. Read this. If in 60 days you don't agree for Radiomatics give you the best ride ever, Monroe will replace them at no charge with any comparably priced shock. Sold me. You want to put them on your car, kid? Yeah. What's a car? <laughs> Thirty-nine years of age, a graduate of North Carolina, six and a half years a coach in the professional ranks. Three times he was the assist leader in the old ABA. He was in Tokyo in 1964, representing the United States in the Olympic Games. Larry Brown, 39 years young, and just 37 seconds away from his biggest coaching win. At the other end, Ray Meyer with 627 career wins. Coach of the year, his 45 team, 1945, won the NIT with the great George Mikan. He has perhaps the most heralded player in the country this year in Mark Aguirre, although admittedly playing injured here in the final minutes. And now he needs for My uh, Michael Holton to miss the free throw and hope his team can get two possessions in time. Holton could all but ice it with his first attempt. UCLA fans begin to celebrate, and so does the Bruin bench. You know, in high school, he averaged 26.4. A lot of points. UCLA by six. And apparently, they're going to return the favor as DePaul upset UCLA last year in the tournament. And this year, it appears to be the Bruins' turn as Vandaway knocks it out of bounds with 27 ticks remaining. Make it. Make it 30. Actually, the official clock shows 30. Larry Brown yelling, make him throw back. Don't let him feed it underneath. That, for a strategy involved, just chew up even a few seconds are so important. Coming. Dillard. Way short. Dan away with a rebound. And Bradshaw is fouled by Holton. Didn't use up much of that clock, Dick. There's 22 seconds left. 21 now. 21 on the official clock. There are so many fans around this country rooting for this man, Ray Meyer. Coaching has become, for obvious reasons, the stresses and screens, a game for young men. Ray Meyer, in many regards, is thought of as a dinosaur. There aren't many like him left. Bradshaw keeps him in the game.